Praise the Lord. Uh, welcome to Wednesday Noonday Bible Class at uh, Community Baptist Church in Santa Rosa, California, where our pastor is Reverend uh, Dr. H. Lee Turner. My name is Brother James Kennedy. Sister Maria Dreyer is the one that types these lessons so you can follow along with us. We have a great lesson for you today. Uh, filled with the Spirit, uh, Ephesians 5, 8 through 21 will be uh, our scripture lesson uh, today. Uh, we'll start off with uh, uh, scripture and some prayer requests. Uh, continue to pray for our sick and shut-in, uh, Tania, Tania uh, Rucker, Nick Carter, Margaret Michaels, Evelyn Cunningham, Sharon Berry, Pastor Tim Swanson, Michael Peterson Jr., Joseph Hampton, Ken and Virginia Sanders, Elias Small, Leslie Dean Johnson, Larry uh, Henry Sr., Reverend Jerry Burgess, uh, Sister Georgia Payton, Roger Walker, Fanny Harris, Sharon Rockstead, Marion Nelson, Beverly Combs, Salisa Rucker, Barnum Duncan, and Eloise Oliver. We want to lift up uh, all those uh, affected in the most recent increased mass shooting. We pray uh, for uh, Brother Francis Fernandez for healing uh, from leg surgery, the Biot family, Biot family uh, at the loss of the side of uh, Biot. We pray for uh, Sister Pam Bray for direction and guidance. We pray for Pastor Cornelius Bracey for the Holy Ground Christian Ministry. We pray for Brother Lee uh, Sparks uh, for salvation and physical healing. We pray for our uh, CBC staff, uh, Sister Marie Dreyer and myself, Jim Kennedy, uh, ministers, Reverend Parker, Reverend Francis, Auxiliary Ministries teacher and church family, we lift up our pastor, Reverend Dr. H. Lee Turner, for encouragement, wisdom, and favor. Pray for all those out there watching or going to watch uh, whatever prayer requests they have. We lift them up in the name of Jesus. We we'll start off with scripture. I'll read from Psalms 100. It says, uh, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye the Lord, he is God. It is he that made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. And blessing be to the hearing and reading of Psalms 100. Let's bow in a word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you today giving you thanks, Lord, for all you do for us, Lord, day in and day out, Lord. We thank you for your word, Lord. We thank you for Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And we thank you for just the Holy Spirit, Lord, to guide us and direct us in uh, our teachings today, Lord. We ask that you fill us up with his spirit, Lord, today, Lord. And Lord, we pray for all those prayer requests that were lifted up to you, Lord. Touch them in a special way, Lord, only as you can, Lord. And we pray for our lesson, Lord. Let uh, something be revealed to us that uh, we can, uh, uh, that will touch our hearts and uh, change our lives, Lord. And, that we can share with others, Lord, uh, about the Holy Spirit, Lord, uh, the Spirit that uh, is living within us, Lord. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for this day. We thank you for your trials and tribulations, Lord. Uh, let us have the faith to just be obedient to your Holy Word, Lord, as we uh, uh, follow you uh, day, uh, this day, Lord. We give you the praise and we give you the honor and we give you the glory and we pray this all in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So we got uh, this is session four filled with the spirit. First question, whom were you most likely to imitate in some areas of your life? And the point, the Holy Spirit enable us to live a fully developed, uh, devoted uh, uh, disciple. Uh, disciple. Devoted disciples. 
The passage is Ephesians 5, 8 to 21, the Bible meets life. In 1993 movie, Groundhog Day, Bill Murray portrayed Phil, a grumpy weatherman who got stuck living the same day, February 2, over and over again. Every morning he woke up uh, to the same song and the same DJ announcing it's Groundhog Day. The movie uh, made viewers think, what if I had to live the same day over and over until I got it right? You likely remember some days when you made some bad choices, choices you would love to correct. If only I could do that one day over. Unfortunately, uh, when we live our lives in our own power and by our own wisdom, we are going to have more days of failure than success, and we don't uh, get the chance to do it over again. The Bible calls us to live as imitators of God, Ephesians 5.1. We are to imitate both God's love and his purity in the way we live, but that kind of life is only possible as we allow the Holy Spirit to fill us. Amen. Okay, the Holy Spirit enables us to live a fully devoted disciple. Ephesians 5, 8 to, 4, 8 to 14, for ye were sometime a Sometimes darkness, but now are ye light. In the Lord walk as children of light. For the fruits of the Spirit is all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful work of darkness, but rather reprove, reprove them. For it is, for it is a shame. Uh, even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all, the, all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatever does make manifest is light. What for, he says, wake thou that sleepest and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. He were children of light, verse 8. The term speaks to believers new identity as the, uh, as the adopted children of God and implies that their life will reflect this identity, amen? The Apostle Paul often used contracting words, pictures, pictures to describe the life of a believer. Should be like and how it should be different from the life of those without Christ. In Ephesians 5, Paul contrasts light and darkness. He did not say they were in darkness, but the, that they were dark, that they were darkness. Their lives were so completely saturated with sin that darkness characterized their lives. Early, uh, verse three and five. Paul has mentioned sexual immorality, impurity, greed, idolatry, as sin that would have been a part of this darkness. All that was in the past. They were sometimes darkened, uh, but no more. As people who belong to Christ, no room remains in their lives for the things of darkness. Now the Ephesians had become light. Their lives were now characterized by light, and they revealed light to the world around them. Right? The light did not arise from them. The light originated in the Lord. This is true of all believers. Christians are light because the spirit of Christ indwells them. Because uh, Paul gave us three uh, changes in that growth out of the fact that we are light. Walk in the light. Since believers have been transformed, our nature is light. Therefore, we should live in a way that demonstrates it. Our life should show evidence that we belong to Christ. Right? Produce the uh, fruit of light. The fruit of the spirit is all goodness and righteous and truth. <coughs> Excuse me. This list is not exclusive, but uh, the, these essential fruits should be evidence in the way we live and interact with other people. People of the light are good. Goodness suggests more than moral character. It means we tangibly care for others. People of the light are righteous. 
Righteousness describes both the character of God and the state of the person who has been redeemed by Christ. However, in this context, uh, Simon defines righteousness as upright behavior. We should act in a way that honors God. People in the light live in truth. The truth is more than an idea. It's an action. Wood defines truth as a genuineness and honesty as such, as such. And then it is not only something to be said, but something to be done. Amen. Uh, discern what pleases the Lord. Providing suggestions, critical thinking. Certainly, goodness, righteousness, and truth are pleasing to God, to the Lord. But day-to-day -day life requires believers to distinguish between what is good and what is are, are the unfruitful works of darkness. A Christian needs to determine what will please the Lord in each situation. Because, they, uh, because they were now light, Paul warns believers not to have fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. But how are we to reprove the work of darkness? Some take this to mean we are to publicly reveal the disclosure of our personal sins committed by believers. Some argue that exposing the work of darkness means making clear how evil those works are. Others believe we should expose works of darkness by our lives, not our words. After all, Paul contended, it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. So if we aren't even to mention the works of darkness, how uh, can we expose them? By living as light in the Lord. This is the line which Paul's statement in verse 13, all things that are reproved or made manifest by the light. We are to live in a way that demonstrates a stark and unmistakable contrast between the works of darkness and light. We do not expose other people's evil so that they can be shunned or condemned. Paul uses what appears to be part of an ancient hymn to emphasize our goal. Awake thou, thou sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Our goal is to help those who are asleep in darkness to arise and encounter the Messiah. It is a call for the lost to find the love, forgiveness, and the light of Christ. What does it look like? Question two. What does it look like to walk as children of light? Um, our life should show evidence that we belong to Christ. And then. Um, like, like on 53, it says, uh, walk in our light, our life should show evidence that we belong to Christ, uh, produce the fruits of life, um, the way we live to interact with other people, the fruits uh, should be evidence of uh, how we live and interact with other people, um, goodness, uh, 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 says that more care it means a tangible care for others. And uh, people are like our righteousness, uh, uh, um, upright behavior. We should act in ways that honor God. And not something to be said, but something to be done. Uh, genuous and honesty as such that it should not only something would be said, but something that be done. So those are some of the things I, I thought were, were, would uh, apply for that question. Ephesians 5, 15 and 18. See, that, uh, see then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore we be not unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine wherein in excess, but be filled with the Spirit. After driving my last car for 20 years, I finally got a new one. I, I then found myself parking as far away from other cars as I could to keep uh, uh, from getting any dents or uh, dings. When I first got it, I would even go outside during the day to check on it. 
it was paying close attention to my car because of its value compared compared with my old one. Paul told the Ephesians to see them to their lives. My car will get old just uh, like my old one. It will eventually get a little scrapes and scratches. It is just not worth the attention I have put have been giving it uh, my life, on the other hand, requires my careful attention. Paul has already told the Ephesian believers not to go back to walk in darkness. Now we switch his word choice and told them to walk not as fools, but as wise. Wise people have more than simple knowledge. They know how to apply knowledge to their lives so they please God. Amen. The unwise allow the fool and uh, poor decision to bankrupt their lives. Paul defines a life of wisdom by three actions, redeeming the time. The phase literally means to buy out the time. The idea is that a believer sees every day as full of opportunity to serve and honor God. He does not let them go to waste. He takes this opportunity seriously. Amen. Because the day are evil, Kohex sees this phrase as a focus on the evil to come in the end time. If that is correct, then we must approach every opportunity with a sense that the evil days are coming. We need to make Christ known while we can. Understand what the will of the Lord is. Decisions are, fool, uh, decisions are foolish when they are based on worldly concerns. As Vang uh, Vangor says, the primary consideration for the Christian must never be what is most profitable financially, what is most pleasurable or enjoyable, or what will bring the greatest personal advantage or honor. His first concern is to discern what the God's will him to be and to do. And I have a, a colleague at the seminar who was trained as an engineer. The decision to change direction and work at the seminary did not make sense to many of his friends or some members of his family, but he believed it was call, calling of God for him. And because of that, he rightly described it as a wise decision. And, uh, all God's calling is a wide decision. Be filled with the Spirit. Paul offers a somewhat odd contrast between getting drunk with wine and being filled with the Spirit. It's a, a different relation to what we allow to control our lives. Alcohol takes in excess, cause a loss of control. Alcohol tends to reduce inhibitions, and people under influence of alcohol are likely to do things or say things that normally would not. By contrast, someone filled with the spirit is also under the influence, but it is the control of God's spirit. A person filled with the spirit speaks the truth of God. His actions place the focus on Jesus Christ rather than himself. Being under control of the Holy Spirit leads a person to walk wisely. What are some uh, benefits of being with the, of being filled with the Holy Spirit? And I just put it on there because it uh, speaks of God's truth and also uh, being under control of the Holy Spirit leads the person to walk wisely. And also, it's a witness, you know, uh, of what the who who's in control of your life, you know, what is you. Uh, Listen to the spirit. You walk in the spirit. You uh, uh, you doing things uh, according to God's will. Okay. The tense of the verb translates by filled indicates continuous action. The wise person continues to allow the spirit to fill his life. Be filled is also a past tense, meaning we will do. We do not fill ourselves. The spirit does the filling. Right. On the other hand, we can reject the filling of the Holy Spirit. We reject his filling when we intentionally engage a sinful behavior and surround ourselves with noise and activity that distracts us from his presence. 
Ephesians 5, 19 to 21. Speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and make a melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourself uh, one to another in the fear of God. In these verses, Paul uses several uh, principles to describe the action or behavior of a spirit-filled person. Speaking to yourself. There is more than simple having a conversation because we are to speak in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Certainly God is the primary audience of our songs and praises, but when we sing, we also speaking to each other encouraging, reminding, inspiring, and admonishing each other. Singing and making melody, these actions come from your heart to the Lord. This is more than simply singing with feeling. The heart represents the center of one's being. So the idea here is that our worship involves every part of us. The praise of the spirit-filled believer is not merely about emotions. The words of the song also express what he believes and lives. Amen. Uh, giving thanks. Most of us find it easy to be complainers uh, when things don't go our way at church. We complain, we fuss about life, and we never seem to have trouble finding something, something to criticize. But the Spirit does not inspire complaints or grumbling. Uh, he inspires a heart of gratitude. Amen. We are filled with spirit when we are thankful for all God's blessing. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, James 1.17. So our gratitude is directed to him. Amen. Submit, do yourself one to another. When we are filled with the spirit, the way we relate to others, people changes. I was driving with my nine-year-old niece and six-year-old nephew in the car. My niece suddenly yelled at her little brother, quit touching me. That one statement uh, started the whining, yelling, and arguing. As we get older, we always want things our way. Whether we are nine or 89, we expect our rights. We uh, will be respected and our demands will be met. What does submitting to one another in the fear of Christ look like? Uh, putting other people be, uh, first, you know, not yourself. It's not about all about yourself, you know. And when we submit to one another, we become more concerned about the needs of others than we are about our own needs and wants. And that's a good answer there. Submission instead of selfishness will define our relationship. We submit in fear of God. We certainly understand submitting to others because of the love of Christ. But here Paul emphasizes we are having a reverent fear of Christ. When we see him and his power and glory and his honor, we are awed and humbled by him. We easily submit to him and we submit to others because we see Jesus. Amen. What do these verses teach us about the spirit role in worship and thanks? And then engage the evidence of being filled with the Holy Spirit in the way we worship Christ. Some of your favorite psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, then other line, one of them in a brief prayer of worship. So you can do that during the week. They you fill it out each of you. Uh, live it out. The Holy Spirit enable us to live as fully devoted uh, disciples. Choose one of the following applications. Be thankful. Next time you find yourself grumbling about things in your life, stop. Ask the Holy Spirit to show you all the good God is doing around you. Ask him to fill your heart with gratitude. Amen. That's important. Evaluate your walk. Do some evaluate how you are walking. Does the way you are living suggest the life of a wise person or a foolish person? Journal about ways you can make the most of days. God has given you. So you have a journal down. Submit. Submitting to one another can be hard. 
we are much more interested in people submitting to us. Choose a strained relationship and develop a plan to love that individual. Consider his or her needs more than your own. Trust God to work in that relationship as you submit to him and prioritize the needs of the other person. Right? So those things you can work on during the week and through your life. Um, this was a great lesson. Uh, next week, uh, special focus in the interdependent independence. And a passage, if you want to read ahead, is 1 Corinthians 10, 22, 23 to 33. Okay, let's bow and word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for this lesson, Lord, and the Holy Spirit, Lord. We thank you, the Holy Spirit, for guiding us and direct us through this lesson today, Lord. We pray that you will continue to uh, be in our lives, Lord, day in and day out, Lord, that we uh, take time to just listen to your voice, Lord, and your leadership, Lord, so we can walk as wise and not as fools, Lord, but to do the will of the Lord by the Holy Spirit tidings. Lord, we thank you, Holy Spirit, for coming into our lives, Lord, as uh, Christ uh, gave us uh, the Holy Spirit uh, the day we greet Christ as our Lord and Savior. We thank you that as we read your word, Lord, that we grow in your wisdom and knowledge, Lord, as we apply your truth to our lives, Lord. So we pray for all those prayer requests that we lift it up to you, Lord. We ask that your will be done in each case, Lord, that you will let uh, the person know that uh, you are working on his behalf, Lord, that he can trust in you no matter what he goes through, Lord, that you will be with him no matter what he goes through, Lord. So we thank you for your presence day in and day out, Lord. Pray for just your guidance this day, Lord. Order our steps that the kingdom building will be done uh, to us, Lord, and, and as we um, walk in you in the spirit and not uh, in the flesh. So we thank you once again for this lesson, Lord. We always thank you for the lessons of your word, Lord. We give you the praise always, and the glory and honor, Lord. We pray this all in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week. Have a great week, and uh, have a great day. God bless.